Hi, this is Brent with Right Stuff Equipment. Today we're going to be going over operation and breakdown and cleaning of a tabletop piston filler. Um, I'm going to break it down first, then we'll put product in it. Um, so everything's pretty conveniently placed with uh, tri climb sanitary fittings here with gaskets in between. So we're just going to break it down how you would when you clean it. First thing is take our hopper off here. Again, all tri clamp fittings. Between there, there's gaskets on each one, so be sure to keep track of the, that stuff. Our hopper comes off pretty easily. This is our nozzle. We'll take our nozzle off again, tri clamp fitting with the seal in there. For all the airlines, they're, they're push to connect fittings, so to take these apart, we're going to want to push in our tube and this the fitting at the same time and then pull the, the tube out while holding the fitting in still. We can pull our tubes. Um, this is the nozzle, it's a dripless nozzle, so the nozzle will come off. And then in here there's another piston, um, you know, that keeps it from dripping everywhere. So we'll use a five millimeter Allen wrench. There's our, our gasket, the, what's keeping it from cleaning. So that's about all the further you need to take it apart um, for a thorough cleaning. As you see, this is greased pretty well. Any of these points with this piston and our main piston will want to add a little bit of grease when we you know, put it back together. Um, next piece, this is our three-way valve. An important note here is to make sure when we take this apart, do not remove this arm here. If this arm gets out of whack, it won't you know, properly turn that three-way valve and our fills can be inconsistent because that valve isn't open up properly. So take this apart, we'll take this piece off here, that's an eight millimeter Allen wrench. We'll loosen up there. If we look here, in between our air cylinder and the arm, is a lock washer. We want to make sure to get that back in the, the proper spot when we go to put it back together. Okay, I'm a firm believer in putting bolts back where they came from. You can't get it loose. Once again, do not remove this arm. Remove the system, the air cylinder from this point here. If we look down at our three-way valve here, as you can see, this would be where we're pulling in product from the hopper into the piston, okay? And then when it's it's back, you can see it's closed off the top and that opening's coming from the piston out through the nozzle. So that's why it's important not to move this arm. If we move this arm, we might not fully open that valve or fully close that valve and can cause some issues. Okay, after that, we can just pop off our three-way valve here. Pulls off again, tri clamp fitting and seal and three way valve here. Okay. Next piece we're going to have to pull off is our product cylinder to expose our piston. That is a six millimeter Allen wrench for these clamps here. We just need to loosen them up just a little bit. You don't have to take the bolt completely out. Okay, and then our cylinder should pull out. Could be difficult um, because of the O-rings and stuff like that inside there, so you have to give it a little force to get it out. So there's our product cylinder. Okay, and you can see our piston here. Again, we got some food grade grease on here. And you can see our O-rings in here. Okay, whenever we take this apart to clean it, we want to inspect our O-rings on everything on this system. Make sure they're not flat or broken or anything like that. If you have bad seals, you'll pull air into your product cylinder and then you'll get inconsistent fill volumes. So if you are getting inconsistent fill volumes, um, 
two places to check. Check these O-rings, make sure they're still good, not flat or anything like that, or your three-way valve. So that's what causes our inconsistent filling. Okay, so that's breaking down the system. Um, we put it back together the same way we took it apart. And uh, we'll have a separate video here in the, for you on running the system. All right, we're back with we're the gonna cut away here. We got it all back together. Now we're gonna go over the operation of the machine. Um, on the front side here, we have two buttons. We have an e-stop. Um, so you press it, it's gonna shut the system down. Twist to release. Then we have a toggle switch to go between manual and automatic mode. Manual mode will utilize your foot switch. Automatic mode is just gonna continually cycle. So on the back end, we'll look here in a second, there's a couple little limit switches. So as soon as it hits those limit switches, you're just gonna continue to go. So we'll move to the back side here. The limit switches I'm talking about, there's one on the front side here, which is gonna, your forward stroke, as soon as we hit this limit switch, it's gonna you know, change and start moving backwards. There's also one on the back, which we can't see at the moment, but same concept, as soon as it hits the back one, it'll start to move forward in automatic mode. So automatic mode, this thing's just going to cycle continually. You'll have to put jars underneath. Manual mode, again, will just use your foot pedal. So we have a few more things on the back here to talk about. Um, our fill volume is here. So this is where we're adjusting our fill volume. What that's going to do is move this front limit switch forward and backwards. Um, there's a set screw here. It's a five millimeter, um, or you can just hand tighten it. It's probably good enough. Um, so I'm going to hand loosen it now. As we move this wheel, we can see our front limit switch moving forward. Okay, so the further this way, the less fill. The further towards the front of the machine, you know, is the greater fill. So we'll just set this somewhere, see what happens here. Again, once you get it set, I always like to tighten it up a little bit. You can put a five millimeter wrench on there. Finger tight's probably pretty good. You just don't want that thing moving on you. There's a few flow controls on our our air cylinder here that's running our piston, okay? These are gonna allow you to stroke faster or slower on your return and your forward. Okay, the front one is for your forward stroke. So that's gonna change how fast that product is dispensing out of the nozzle. If you're getting a lot of splashing, you might have to turn this down. It's gonna be a little bit slower fill, but not gonna splash around on you. Okay, the back side is for the return stroke or the fill, you know, when you're filling up your, your product cylinder. An important note on that, for thicker products such as lotions or you know anything that's not a real thin water-like product, you want to run your your return stroke a little bit slower because of that thick product. You don't want to you know entrap air if you're moving your cylinder too quickly. Um, so if you're getting inconsistent fills with a thicker product, you might try slowing down your return stroke here to really get a, a nice pull through that cylinder and to fill that cylinder properly without air bubbles. On the front side here we have one more flow control on our nozzle. So this is going to be the opening and closing of the nozzle. Um, if you're getting some leaking out of your nozzle as the system is not dispensing, you're probably not getting this nozzle closed quick enough so we can change how fast or how slow we're closing the nozzle of our system there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and dispense, see what happens here. Again, I'm in manual mode so I have to use my, my foot pedal here. So we'll put the foot pedal and see the dispense. Okay, so we're running, that's roughly about 100 milliliters there. Okay, this particular system will run 15 to 150 milliliters. Um, these piston fillers come in, you know, different sizes. Um, but this one's a 15 to 150. So we're roughly, we're a little over 100 millimeters there. Okay, so let's just shoot for 100. So what we're going to do on the back side here, we're going to limit it again our wheel here so we'll loosen up our set screw and we'll bring our limit switch a little bit closer it won't dispense quite as much there we'll try to hit 100 milliliters here so as that settles out it's pretty close to 100 milliliters there okay so now i'm going to go ahead and just show you the automatic mode here if we flip this toggle switch over to automatic see what it does here. So it dispenses, it's going to return, and then just keep dispensing without the utilization of the foot pedal. That gives you kind of an idea, kind of speed-wise, of how that automatic mode runs. These machines are 
They're great. They'll fill a lot of different products. Um, setup is key for some of those thicker products. The water-like products run pretty seamlessly. Um, run pretty seamlessly with any type of product as long as the setup's proper. Um, if you have any questions about the products you're running and if you're having any issues, get a hold of us here at, at Right Stuff Equipment.